Now, most people know when it comes to Linux, it's pretty secure, right? Well, when I set up a Linux server, it is, and there's a lot of things I do in the server realm that make it secure. But in the desktop realm, uh, Linux desktop in particular, a lot of configurations by default aren't. And many Linux users make it so they're even more vulnerable. So a lot of people are worried about mitigations and other uh, security holes, which are valid. But these ones I'm talking about today are the three biggest things I see Linux users do to where they're much more vulnerable than they think they are. Because I think the worst thing I ever see is someone asking the question, am I secure? The answer is always no. Security is a journey, not a destination. But let's uh, tackle these three big things today and at least make you a little more secure if you want to do them. Now, obviously this could be an hour long video going over a whole bunch of ways to hack Linux, but I'm really gonna cover the three big things. There's the network side, there's the operating system time and side, and there's the application side. I'm gonna pick the biggest one or the biggest security flaw I see. If I were to put my black hat on and pretend like I'm gonna hack some Linux desktop users, these are the entry points and the places I would first probe to see if they're open because chances are they would be. So the first one is gonna be not using a firewall. By default settings, most places don't actually have a firewall. Like if we do UFW uh, status, you see I don't even have UFW installed, which is the firewall. There's also like NFT tables and IP tables that does almost the same thing, but UFW makes it a little bit easier. If we just do a sudo install UFW, say yes to this. Now, if you're on Arch, you would just do a pacman-s UFW. If you're on Debian, it would be apt or nala install UFW. This is a very, very common package. And now if we do like sudo UFW status, you'll see it's inactive. So just installing it doesn't really do anything. It just makes it so you can lock down your system. So the recommended rules I usually go for is 22, 80, 443, and then deny everything else coming into this system. This basically allows this to only use these ports. So if an application tries to get out of line and use something else, you need to go through UFW allow and then the port they need. I would just copy that, put that into terminal, and then just go. And then if we come back to our status page, you can see all your rules. You can see the firewall is now active. Uh, it is allowing SSH, uh, DNS, H80 and 443 is basically the web. And that's basically it. Those are the only thing allowed into the system. And on SSH, which is a big attack vector most people use, I'm putting it as limit, which is like a tar pit, meaning if people attack it multiple times, it'll allow f maybe five to 10 attempts before it just shuts that user down. The other thing is fail to ban. Now I'm not gonna go too far into fail to ban because this is more of a server setting, but one, I would recommend it setting up for anybody that's gonna be sharing any services through their thing. Any server I've ever set up typically has a firewall and also fail to ban. I would say fail to ban is probably the biggest thing. I have seen a lot of misconfigurations of fail to ban in the server realm. So make sure you're actually enabling it. And uh, you can see I put like some sample files here for fail to ban. Uh, so follow that if you're curious. Basically what it does is it's an intrusion uh, detection. So if it sees, hey, someone's attacking all these ports over and over and over again, uh, this basically bans them. So it just says, hey, you're out of here. You can't attack this system anymore because you've done five to 10 or 20 different bad things. And I don't want to accept that request anymore. People think without these two things, the, the attacker can keep attacking and keep probing the system. And that will make it to where they will eventually find a weakness. Again, security is a journey, not a destination, meaning everyone is vulnerable. It's just a matter of how vulnerable you are. And that's what you need to be thinking about. Whether you're a Linux user, whether you're a Windows user, whether you're a Mac user, all of these are vulnerable systems at one point or another. So it just depends on how many points, how big that attack surface is. I always am preaching about Windows has so many different attack vectors. Linux still has quite a few and so does Mac. I mean, these systems do have ways to get hacked into. And this is the first layer of it is the network. The operating system when it comes to Linux desktop users, 
I would say repositories are the biggest flaw. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a Debian based install with like 10 different repositories or 20 different repositories. And keeping up with that many repositories is hilarious to me because one, they could break their system because one repository might uh, override another one of the official one and, and it just kind of could trip over each other, much less some of the other vulnerabilities that might come from it installing an older version to make a dependency uh, for some program that you're wanting and that's why you're using that repository. Right here, I give an example of Nala. Now, obviously I'm on my Fedora system System, so I can't really show this, but I did want to show pin priorities. So if you did that one example video, which I made uh, just a little bit ago, showing uh, using Nala instead of apt for the front end to install and upgrade your system, I would highly recommend checking that out. Uh, the video name was stop using apt. This right here would do a pin priority of 100 on here, and you would just drop it into this directory. You would just make an volume a uh, perf file and then copy this, put it in there, and basically would say anything coming from volian.org is where no, the Nala package is, pin priority 100, meaning it is behind the operating system. If there's a update to like GCC compiler, it's gonna update it through Debian instead of Volian if it had it in that repository. Now, luckily, I think the Volian repository only has Nala, but they might expand it. And then that can cause all kinds of problems with a Debian-based system. Uh, and that's why when you add these repos, you wanna add these preference files to say, hey, yes, anything from here is allowed, but I only want this package at this priority. Now, you can also change this asterisk. This is a wild card that would say, hey, I only want the package Nala to be upgraded from Volian. And you can do that. And that would help secure your system a little bit better than just adding a whole bunch of random repositories and just saying, hey, whatever packages they want to replace on my system, they can go for it. That's also a very big recipe for security flaws and uh, potentially breaking your system too. Now let's get to the application level. This one is something I don't think anybody in the Linux desktop can do, uh, at least from a desktop level. If you're really into like security and prevention, I highly recommend learning about AppArmor and SE Linux. Uh, many distributions do distribute them by stock defaults, but they are left in just complain or a permissive mode that just throws some stuff in the log when an application does something funky. It allows it to do that funky thing, but it just logs it. The good thing about these programs is you can set profiles. So say, hey, this program can only access this part of the system or this part of the file system. It can only have access to this hardware and not that hardware. So you have all this control, which is fantastic. And in the server realm, typically if I'm setting up like a rel based server, it comes with SE Linux, probably the best for security. And I can configure all that to enforced mode and this will completely go through it. Just know the difference between uh, for app armor, there's complain mode and, and enforcing. And for SE Linux, it's permissive and enforced. Uh, enforce really locks down the system. And if you install a bad application, it's gonna lock it down. These are fantastic uh, applications if you're concerned about security. And if you're using Linux for security, I would definitely recommend learning them and putting them into a force mode. And then if you run into like some oddball program that you have that doesn't have a profile for, you know, either app armor or SE Linux, you can create that profile and say, hey, I only want this to have access to this folder in my home folder and not have any access to any of the hardware in my system. And then you can literally limit all these down just using these profiles. So that's a beautiful part of Linux, but so many people just install app armor and then just never do anything with it. They just leave it in complain mode and then it might show up on some, you know, system D log somewhere. But for the most part, 99% of the users that have it installed, they really don't do anything with it. But these things are the three big things that I think many people miss in Linux desktop. And if you do want to tighten down your system and really like have it like Fort Knox, this is how I'd go about doing it because this is what I do in the server realm that really, really helps make that server much more secure than at a regular old desktop machine. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section and I'll see you in the next one.